The following BLTV program is brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Please enjoy. Welcome to Learn About Law. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law, and today we're going to explain substitute decision making in Illinois. Substitute decision making is the process of declaring someone responsible for another person who is incapable of making financial, legal, or personal decisions for themselves. It can come in the form of a guardianship or in the form of powers of attorney, and we'll talk about both and the different flavors of each. So let's start with guardianship. A guardianship is a court proceeding whereby the judge appoints a guardian to be responsible for some or all of the decisions of a disabled adult. So there's guardianship in the context of children. Right now we're talking about guardianship in the context of a disabled adult. This person might be disabled by reason of uh, a genetic disability, injury, accident, uh, disease, old age. There's any reason, uh, any number of reasons for somebody to be considered disabled. But in a guardianship proceeding, they are labeled as legally disabled by the court, and then they need. Th- this is what causes somebody else to b- need to care for them. So there's two types of guardianships. One is guardianship of the estate, and the other is guardianship of the person. The guardian of the estate is responsible for making financial decisions. So they manage bank accounts, investments, pay bills. Uh, The guardian of the person is responsible for managing personal decisions, like who is going to visit with the person, where that person is going to live. Sometimes this requires court oversight uh, to determine where they're going to live. But they manage the day-to-day life of the person while the guardian of the estate manages the finances. And this can be two people or it can be one person sometimes a guardian of the estate is appointed but not a guardian of the person and another thing that you should know is you can carve out a limited guardianship so if somebody is capable of making some but not not all decisions the court can explicitly say the guardian's role is limited to making x y and z types of decisions rather than a plenary guardianship which is all financial decisions the guardian of the estate gets to make one thing to understand about guardianship is that guardians have to continue to report to the court generally on an annual basis. A guardian of the estate has to file a report regarding all the transactions that took place with the the ward's assets, uh, and a guardian of the person doesn't always have to come back to court, but sometimes the court will require an an annual reporting, and sometimes the, the guardian will want to make a decision like checking the person into an assisted living facility or changing the residence that requires court approval. So this is kind of an ongoing case uh, during the life of the disabled adult where the guardian will continue to be supervised by the court to some extent. Now let's talk about powers of attorney. This is something that people include often in their estate plan. So if you meet with your attorney about a will or a trust, you'll often execute a power of attorney. And a power of attorney is intended to avoid the necessity of a guardianship proceeding. reason people want to avoid it is there's legal costs associated with setting up the court case. There's, it's a lot more stress on the families uh, if a guardianship proceeding is necessary because you need a medical expert to come and testify. It's often contentious about whether somebody is uh, willing to have a guardianship placed over them. So, and finally, it goes on for the lifetime of the person where the guardian of the state is going to have to keep coming back into court and reporting to the court. There's benefits to that. The court oversight does provide a benefit. It, it provides safety to the, the ward and, and some security that the guardian is not going to mismanage their assets. But if you have somebody you really trust not to uh, self-deal with your assets, you may not want them to go through all the expenses and headaches of a guardianship proceeding. So that's where powers of attorney come in. A power of attorney is a document that says if I become mentally incompetent and a doctor certifies me as being mentally incompetent, then I name this person I trust to take action with respect to either my financial affairs, and that's a financial power of attorney, or my personal affairs, where am I going to live, healthcare decisions, that's a healthcare power of attorney. You execute this document and you name an agent that will act if you're not able to act for yourself, and you can name successor agents if they're not able to act. And with this power of attorney document and a a medical certification that you're mentally incompetent, this person now will be able to make financial and legal and personal decisions on your behalf without the need to go through a guardianship proceeding and be named as your guardian. So those are the two flavors of decision-making. You don't always have the choice between a power of attorney 
and guardianship. If somebody does not execute a power of attorney while they are of sound mind and mentally able to care for themselves, then you can't, it's too late. Then you have to go through a guardianship proceeding if you want to get substitute decision making power. Again, the pros of a guardianship proceeding over just working through a power of attorney are court oversight and a little bit of more protection for the, the ward. The con is it's more expensive, it's stressful, and it's an ongoing uh, responsibility to the guardian to continue to report back to the court. There's record keeping responsibilities that they might not otherwise have. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments section below this post at learn-about-law.com or below the video on our YouTube station. If you found this helpful, please subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, and SoundCloud, and you'll be notified of our daily article and video posts. If you need some help, give us a call at 630-324-6666. That's 630-324-6666. We, uh, we handle guardianships, we handle estate planning, uh, and several other areas of law, and we offer free consultations. We have offices all around Chicagoland for your convenience. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizurebusiness.com. And visit Making Real Estate Fun for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation.